Welcome back to the garage. Now, what with it being winter, there's going to be a lot less riding going on. There's going to be some exciting build series coming back to the channel. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting for bits to arrive, I wanted to do a little bit of a video about all of my vlogging gear, my setup, how I get my audio uh, from the helmet, you know, where I mount my cameras on the helmet, how do I get the shots from the bike, you know, these fantastic 360 shots. So I'm going to cover all of my kit. Uh, how I mount stuff, how I achieve the video quality that I do. <laughs> Not saying it's that good, but if that is of interest to you, get yourself a cuppa, get a little drinky, and I'll talk you through my full vlogging setup. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about cameras. I've got a lot of cameras. <laughs> Here's a little overview of all of my cameras. I've got a fair few of them. I've started off, you know, with the original, I think the Hero 2 I used to use at the beginning when I started this six or seven years ago. Then I went up and had the Hero 4. Then I've tried all sorts of, you know, Chinese cameras or action cameras. All work pretty well from a video point of view, but they've always suffered with poor audio. So when you're connecting, you know, a, a camera to your helmet, you obviously need a mic inside your helmet. That's where they've been let down. You know, there's not been a way to connect an external microphone. So the GoPro Hero 4 has been my camera staple for the last probably four years. And that's the camera I've used on my helmet the whole time. And even today, it is the humble Hero 4, which I mount to my helmets. The reason I haven't upgraded to the 7, you know, the, the 6, 7, 8 or 9 is really because of the audio. With the Hero 4, you can just plug in the little small mic adapter, you know, 3.5mm mic adapter, and you can then connect your, your mic in your helmet. So it's very simple. The cameras are also very robust. You know, that they very, very rarely fail. So you can go out and record something, come back, and you've got audio and video at the end of the day and there's nothing more annoying than going out recording a bike review and getting home to find you've got no audio the image quality is only 1080p you know so but you know, these days that's not really good enough so i'm looking for alternatives to upgrade on the helmet also there's no video stabilization with the hero 4 which we'll come on to a little bit but it's just a very very reliable camera i do have later heroes i've also got a 7 that's it i've only got a 7 and i only got the 7 because of the stabilization the hyper smooth stabilization which came in um you can run uh, a, a helmet microphone through this camera but you need a great big audio adapter which you know literally it's like a big block you have to then fix to your helmet and then you know it's also also problems with water ingress to that big setup um, it's got the stabilization but I'm not 100% sure I like stabilization on the helmet I quite like a little it gives it more of a realistic feel to the video without the stabilization so obviously your head is stabilized anyway so unless i'm pulling up at a junction looking left and right which can induce quite a lot of movement in which case i'll cut to a different camera on the bike but as far as gopros go i mainly use just the hero 4 the old classic reliable camera a camera is only as good as the one which is working or is it the one you've got in your pocket <laughs> i can't remember but for me the helmet camera is the hero 4. it's been my little hero for the last four years when it comes to bike cameras, then there's a whole plethora of different cameras I tend to use. What I've been doing for the last year, as you've probably noticed, I'm one of these people that really uses a lot of 360 camera footage. So this is a camera footage you see where, you know, you can see the whole bike in frame as you're riding. Now you need to be very careful when you're using the 360 footage. And a lot of people say they don't like the results of it and I think that is because you have to frame these shots quite well you have to frame it so it looks natural so it's not too much of a curved look to the image and the bike looks a bit distorted the Insta 360 One X was the first 360 camera which really revolutionized the way these 360 cameras work for me originally when I thought of 360 cameras, I thought of being able to sort of move the picture around. So you say, you say you're watching a YouTube video, you could touch the screen and look around where you wanted to look, which is, you know, it's a bit of a fun thing, but that didn't really, wasn't really something I wanted to include as part of my videos because the resolution was bad. And I wanted, you know, people would miss 
the whole point of what I was recording. So you can't edit your own videos by watching it yourself and know what you're meant to be looking at, you know, where the action is. But what the Insta cameras enabled you to do was actually reframe the shot afterwards. So go in and then choose where you want to look. So if you've gone out riding and someone overtakes or something happens, you can make sure that's in shot when you come back in the edit. What that does mean is a, is a bit of extra workflow. So you've got to go through and re-edit the image which comes off of this. So not like the GoPro, you record it, you've got your footage, you put that into your video project and that's that. With the Insta360 cameras, when you're using them in this way, you then have to reframe it and choose where you want to look. So there's an additional workflow, but I think it's more than worth it for the results you get. With the Insta360 cameras, you've got a lens at either side of the camera. So this is shooting front, this is shooting back. There's this space in the middle here. So basically what these cameras do, because these cameras, each of these cameras shoot slightly more than 180 degrees, so they're cutting in, in the software, it actually takes out this piece it can't see and it makes it look like the camera is floating in the air. So it gives a really good effect when it's on the bike that you can't see how this camera is actually mounted to the bike and it looks almost like you've got a little drone following you along. So the Insta360 cameras for me are fantastic. So I've actually got three, well I've actually got four Insta360 cameras. One of these fell off the bike at some point. So I've got the 1X, I've got the 1R, which is a modular 360 camera. So you can plug in a 360 module or you can plug in a standard action camera module or you can plug in a one inch sensor, which I don't have to do sort of high quality vlogs. So this is sort of an all in one camera solution. It's very, very good. Insta360 have now just brought out this puppy, which is the One X2. Now I've used this on a few videos now. It's basically waterproof. The One X was never waterproof. It's always quite vulnerable if you're gonna go out in the rain. The One X2 is waterproof. It's also got a better way it does the uh, stitching effect. It's also got a much bigger battery. This battery is 50% bigger than the one in the One X. So the battery life on this is over an hour, probably an hour and 15 minutes. It's about sort of 40 minutes with the X, One X. So the One X2, I've only just got this. I've done a few videos with it. Also, it's got a proper preview screen, a proper color preview screen. So it's much easier to use than the One X, which was just a, a very simple display. which is a very simple LCD display. It's quite hard to go through the settings Whereas the X2 has a full color screen, much easier to use. The actual camera is slightly wider. It's slightly bigger, um, more or less the same from the front, but from the side, it's slightly wider because of the extra battery life. And of course, everything's behind closed doors on this because it's now waterproof. It feels a little bit heavier as well. It feels more solid. It feels a better quality unit. And the big thing about this, if you're using it on the bike, is it has very, very good audio now. With the One X, it used to be a lot of wind noise. You know, you, you, I could only really use it with the camera on the helmet because without it, you just get a lot of whistling, a lot of wind noise. You can no longer hear the bike. With the One X2, there's multiple microphones on this now and they fix that issue of the really bad wind noise. So you can actually get some decent bike audio just by using this camera. Definitely my favorite out of the three for what I want to use it for. Now, how do I mount these cameras? That's a very good question. I use these RAM mounts. Now I've got two different sizes of these. I've got a big one and I've got a medium size one. And then I've got an Ultimate Add-ons uh, sort of ball, ball, ball adjuster. You can unscrew that, move it around. I then get these extendable bars and then different sort of fittings on the end, depending what camera I want to attach to these basically. Um, the Insta360, there's an optional uh, motorcycle mounting kit and that now comes with a RAM mount. So it's absolutely fantastic. They've now included a RAM mount as part of that motorcycle mounting kit. So if, if you get in a 360 camera, I'd recommend getting the mounting kit to go with it. You get a lot of these parts with it. You get a lot of these bars. You get all the GoPro sticky mounts. You get the different sorts of attachments, whether that be a regular uh, a camera mount or a GoPro mount, but these can really go anywhere. And I've used these on the handlebars. I've used these just on the on the frame, you know, on bikes where you can just bolt it onto a frame. It's really sturdy. 
So once these are screwed on, really they're not going anywhere. They're absolutely solid. So these are great for mounting to the actual bike, mounting the cameras to the helmet. I've got several different mounts. The best thing to go is a chin mount. On my X Spirit 3, I've got a chin mount here. What you struggle with chin mounts with the GoPro mounts is, you know, they're flat and crash helmets tend to be curved. So with this one, I'm using a, a, a custom made mount just for the Shuey helmet. I don't know if I can zoom in so you can see that. You can see that the actual mount is made to fit directly onto the X Spirit. There we go. So there's the mount. So that is a custom made GoPro mount for this helmet made by a company called Fab Mounts. So these are handmade. There's a chap in Singapore who makes these. He does them from all different sorts of helmets, but I really wanted, when I got this Xperia, I really wanted that, rather than have it on the side here and have some sort of arm coming around, I wanted it mounted directly on the front. Fab custom mounts. They're quite expensive. I think it's about 40 quid just for this mount. It's like custom made, but it's a fantastic solution that it's absolutely solid and it looks factory fitted. So um, that's how I mount to the helmets. It's all very well having good video quality, but you really want to get some decent audio quality. And it's quite hard getting decent audio quality from a crash helmet. There's a lot of wind noise. Um, obviously it's quite a restricted space. So as you talk, it can be a little bit boomy. If you've got quite a deep voice like me, it's quite hard to get those levels perfect. I've played around for days, you know, trying to get the ideal mounting solution for your microphone. And what I found the best thing to do is actually mount the mic underneath the cheek pad of the helmet. I don't know if you can just see there, but my microphone is just tucked under the cheek pad. And make sure you use a decent dead cat, you know, to reduce the wind noise. And it also really helps if you've got a helmet with uh, some sort of chin mount also cuts down the wind noise. So that would be my tips here. Mount it quite close to your mouth, underneath the cheek pad. Um, make sure you use a dead cat or you'll get a lot of wind noise and just, you know, breath noise, breathing sounds. Especially if you're doing an off-road video, you can't help that, you'll get that anyway. And then if you can, use some sort of chin mount on your helmet to reduce further the wind noise. And that is how, that is my tips to get decent audio from the helmet itself. So you've got your helmet camera setup working. You've got your bike camera setup working. Another thing I've been doing is getting good audio from the bike itself. How do I get some, like the, the H2 video I did the other week, I wanted to really pick up the sound and the fantastic pops and bangs and whistles that that machine makes. So getting it, what you're getting through the helmet is very limited. You know, the exhaust at the back of the bike, all the pops and bangs are coming from the back of the bike. How do you pick that up? Well, what I use is this. <laughs> this bit of kit is a Zoom H2R audio recorder with a great big windsock on the top, basically, a, a dead cat to reduce, again, that wind. It's, on a bike, it's all about getting rid of the wind noise to get good audio. And this is what I use. So I put this in my backpack. Now, again, it depends what your kit you've got. But one, one of my bits of kit, which doubles up and makes a fantastic addition to vlogging is my vest. I must get so, every video I get a comment to say, what is that vest? And, and for me, the vest is fantastic. Not only, let me get it for you. This is my vest, you see in all my videos. It's got pockets everywhere. You look like you're a bit like you're something out of the SAS. <laughs> it's the downside with it. But you've got multiple pockets for all of your batteries and everything like that. But also on the back of this, it's got rear pockets. And this is where I place my Zoom microphone. Turn it on, press record. There's a hold option on here. So if you press buttons, it doesn't stop it recording because that can be quite annoying. You get home and it's stopped recording, but put it on hold so the button presses don't stop it recording. And I just tuck that upside down in the back of my backpack. This backpack also has some holes in the bottom. So it lets a bit of the sound into this and that picks up all the bike audio. So if you've got a, if you've got a standard bike with a standard exhaust, forget it, you won't pick up much. You've got a noisy beast like the H2, you get all the pops, the bangs, the whistles, it's fantastic. So that is how I get the decent bike audio. <laughs> Another little trick and another question people ask is how do I get those shots sort of behind the bike? You know, I've got a pole sticking up and there's an, there's an inch to 360 
camera on the top and you get a great big aerial sort of view of the surrounding countryside makes quite a nice shot if you're riding a bike which is you know an adventure bike something like that there's a bit of decent scenery when I, mean, I took that set up all around Greece on my Greece tour videos you know it's coming link at the top there I almost don't have to say anything on this tour it's just let the scenery do the talking and the 360 camera do the talking it just fantastic shots people ask me how do i mount that to my back again it's with this jacket best even within one of the, the rear pockets on here not that side and within here there is a a little area whereby you can insert this which is the insta360 selfie stick that slides into the pocket the toolkit pocket designed to put a screwdriver holds it in there really firmly. You can then extend that up and down and you've got a perfect solution for mounting your 360 camera up your back. Brilliant. <laughs> that jacket just does everything I need it to do. I, I very rarely go out without that jacket on because I've got all my stuff in it. You can actually carry the same amount of gear in that as what I can with a 25 litre backpack. And because that jacket has got, you're carrying stuff front and back, it spreads that load so you can carry a lot of gear and it doesn't feel like you've got that weight all on your back, pulling your back. It's all spread on the front, it's spread on the back. It's got all those little accessories where I can mount my 360 camera, I can mount my audio recorder. It's brilliant. It is an Ogio flight vest. Link in description. Other cameras I use is of course my vlogging camera, the camera I'm recording this on right now. Let me switch to my other camera to show you this camera. So this is the Sony ZV-1, which is quite a new camera. It came out middle of last year. Sony were claiming it was the ultimate camera for vloggers because it had stabilization, you know, it had 4K 25 video quality, lots of things with it. But the problems I, it's a good camera. I tend to find what can happen though, let's switch back to it again is it's quite close it's got quite a the lens is not very wide angle so when you're vlogging it's quite a zoomed in picture so you get quite a lot of your your face in the image so what i've been using is uh so i can get away from the camera a little bit and still get good audio i can go right back here and my audio is still good that is because i'm using the rode wireless microphone which is another add-in um, you can see the little lapel adapter for it. So this is a wireless microphone, so I can go as far away from the camera as I like. Um, they're connected wirelessly. There's a, there's a module, uh, like a sender module and a receiving module. The receiving module sits in the, the hot shoe attachment on the camera, and you can hear me nice and clear. So I can go back a little bit from this camera because it's a bit tight, it's a bit tight on the image. You don't want to see my face filling the whole screen. So I get back a bit with that. The, the Rode wireless mic enables me to do that. Good audio, fantastic. So that is my vlogging setup with the Rode mic and the Sony ZV-1 camera. What else do I use? This, you can see this, to get fully immersed in this whole vlogging setup, I must have thousands and thousands of pounds worth of kit now, which I've accumulated over the years I've been doing this. So I've got a lot of kit now. I've got a really good setup. I'm still adding stuff to it all the time. And another camera I've been using recently, when this first came out, I wasn't very impressed with it. And that is this, which is the DJI Osmo Pocket. As you can see, this is a stabilized gimbal camera. See how the actual camera on top is staying steady? Looks like something out of War of the Worlds, doesn't it? But that stays steady, so you can get really steady shots. You can walk with this, you can talk into it. I got this really as a, as a vlogging setup again. So you little button press and it'll spin around and look at me. Hello. So this is, uh, let's put it, let's record. Why not record? There we go. Yes, this is the Osmo Pocket. So stabilized, so I can move this up and down. I can tilt it left and right, as you can see. And the image on this camera remains relatively level. <laughs> this is great. This is what I use this for. I've been using this in the slow motion mode. So I can press a button and it'll flip round. There's me, uh, there's me, uh, there's my Sony. Press it again, flip round again. So if you want to talk to the camera, you can, hello, I'm talking to the camera. Look at this, press the button. It's points at what you want to look at. So it's really good 
the main disadvantage with it is, the, the, you know, that it's so small, the window to see what you're recording. And when it first came out, the autofocus wasn't very good. So you'd put it in shot and it wouldn't really recognize it was your face and the focus would be all over the place. There was a few updates to the firmware on this camera. And I spent, I had this, bought this middle of last year, or maybe a year before, when these first came out. I used it a few times and never used it again. It's one of those cameras that you buy and you think, well, that's not great. Gets put on the back shelf, never gets used. Then I saw some review videos of people saying there's a new firmware update with this, which fixes all of the issues. Now, the autofocus is fantastic. It picks up your face, really good face pickup rec recognition. It was also brilliant for doing slow motion stuff. So on a lot of the fly-by videos I've been doing with Greg, we act, I'm actually using this to record sort of some slow motion stuff. And it'll only record slow motion in 1080p, so unfortunately not 4K, but it will do four times slow motion, and you can get some really nice, because you've got the gimbal, some really nice panning slow motion shots. So this is really what I use this for now. But it's turned into something I'm using more and more because it's so small, so you can take it literally anywhere because it's got such a small form factor. That's the DJI Osmo Pocket. And there is now, an Os there is now a Pocket 2 came out about two months ago, which is uh, even better. So I did think about selling this and getting the Pocket 2, but it's fine for what I need it for. Bye-bye, Mr. Pocket. Get in back in your pocket. So there we go. I hope that was useful, depending on what level you want to get into this. You know, if you're just interested in slapping a camera onto your bike and where best place to mount it, I hope that's been useful. The Insta360 cameras are brilliant for picking up bike video. And now the new X2 has decent, the One X2 has decent audio to go with that, even better, and it's waterproof. And the battery's hour and a half on it almost, you know, it's fantastic. If you want to mount to your helmet, I hope I've given you some idea of where to mount to pick up decent audio from within your helmet if you want to get into this whole motor vlogging thing. Hope that's useful. So there we go. Hope that was of interest. I'll probably do some more garage videos. Maybe I'll cover my riding gear in a future video if you're interested. But we will be starting soon the build series on the new bike. Yes, the SMCR. I have bought it. It's now mine. I finally own another Supermoto. I've got the Hyper. I keep forgetting I've even got the Hypermoto. It's just in bits everywhere. I'm awaiting the cylinders back so I can get that. As soon as I get the cylinders back, We'll crack on and we'll get the hypermotard back together. The target will be perhaps a four or five bite, a four or five episode build series of the SMCR. I've got some really decent kit coming for that. It's going to be incredible. And then we'll finish off the hypermotard with however many episodes of videos it takes for me to <laughs> put that bike back to, together again. I mean, it's been six months or since I took it apart. It's going to be a nightmare now to remember how that bike goes back together. So I'll probably have to re-watch my own videos to remind myself how it came apart. It's a good job I did it, wasn't it? <laughs> I need to have watched those now to get it back together. But thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Have a brilliant Christmas. I'm sure I'll speak to you again before Christmas. But if I don't, have a brilliant Christmas. Have a good one. Stay safe. Ride safe. And I'll see you in the new year, if not before. See you later, guys. This is Power Level 1 which is full power. <laughs> it's that one. I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! Oh, Listen to this. Never mind getting beard up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs>